Greetings from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry and today we're going to talk about some seed storage and we're going to plant some really special seeds. Good morning Titus. Wow, things are popping. All kinds of action going on here in the potager with glorious bulbs coming up and roses are starting to leaf out. And there's just an abundance of happy and vibrant beauty going on in here right now. Bring your seeds in style. Now, many of us who are gardeners have so many seeds, it becomes a real jumble sometimes. So it's really great to be able to organize them. So I've come up with some really nice ways to organize my seeds without sticking them in CD containers or something like that. And if that's what you do, that's great. But I prefer to have something really pretty to look at. If I can't see my seed packets outright because they're enclosed to keep them safe, I at least want them stored in an attractive container. Now this is actually something I thought, wow, what a great idea. This is from a vintage treadle sewing machine. You know how they always have the drawers on the side. And I thought, wow, that I was thinking about ways to store seeds that would really be convenient where the seed packets could fit right inside those drawers. And these are perfect. Your seed packets fit right inside the drawers. Now somebody took this one and they cut it in half because normally the drawers would be twice as long as this, which would be a lot better. But I found this in an antique store, just exactly cut in half like this. Now I'm the one that put the transfers on it because it was kind of a boring box and I wanted it to be kind of exciting because this is where I store my vegetable seeds. So I put little tags on each drawer so that I know what's inside. And if I want to go out and plant herbs, for example, I can go outside, take the whole drawer with me, and all my herbs that I'm ready to plant are right here in this drawer. That's one great way to store seeds. But you can find all kinds of little ways to keep your seeds together where they're safe from the mice. You can store them in a cool room so they're protected but they're still easily available. A small set of drawers that I put transfers on last year. I didn't really know what I would do with the drawers but they make an ideal seed packet storage container. So let me show you what I did inside. Now when you open up the drawer you can see dividers here so that the, the, the seeds are pretty can stay pretty organized like this. They can't stand up straight or the drawer won't close but they do lean over and then I'm able to shut the drawer. So depending on the height of your actual drawer is whether or not you're going to get all your seeds standing up but that doesn't really matter. But this has been really convenient. Some organized are these little cardboard containers. My inspiration for making these was from Baker Creek. My last order of seeds came in a little container like this. I thought, boy, that is a really great way to store your seeds according to the kind of seed it is and the variety. So I decided to go ahead and make some of them and I made them out of just cardboard, loose cardboard, um, such as, uh, you know, you get off a cereal box or a cracker box, something like that. It's just a slot and I just put rubber stamps on the front just to make them more interesting and then mark each one. So here we have the snapdragons. All the snapdragons are in this container, nicely organized. So if I want to go out one day and simply plant, say, dried grasses, all my dried grasses are right here and I know how to get them. They're easy to take out, stick these in my pocket and plant them without having to carry out a whole load of seeds. You can also separate these according to whether it's a perennial or an annual or what month you should plant it in. Whatever way you want to organize your seeds, this just makes it easier and tidy and it's um, a pretty way to contain your seeds. You don't want to make those little containers. Giant paper clips are fantastic just to organize your seeds and put them in the same category use glass jars. I mean, ever since the incident about two summers ago when some mice got into my 
potting shed and just decimated my seed packets because they were pretty much out in the open on a shelf. I have been very careful about storing my seeds, but they can't get into glass containers. These are especially good if you're collecting seed from your own garden or even packets of seed. So this is just full of sweet pea seed. And these are all organized. These are all sweet peas. Sunflowers. Collect your sunflowers and put them in a great big jar and then put them in a place that doesn't get a lot of heat or a lot of sun. Of course the ideal place to keep your seeds is in a beautiful antique seed box. And I have a lot of these and I've stored my seeds in here for many years. I just don't want to, right now I want to use this for something else. They're beautiful. Just love the graphics on that. We're going to plant some really special seeds, and what makes them special is where they came from, not necessarily what kind of plant they are going to produce. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. First of all, I want to start out with some tea. So we haven't done this in a while. This is Queen Anne's tea from Fortnum and Mason, and we're going to put it in this little silicone silicone kitty. Pop it in the cup and let it seep. A combination of Ceylon tea and Assam, and it's smooth and rich. Put a little bit of tea inside this kitty. <laughs> Not much, because it's pretty strong. Honestly, I know you're going to ask me where I got these, but I just can't remember. Honestly, I cannot remember. But I've also got a little dog. Here's the little dog. They're the dog people. I'm a dog and a cat person. Okay, let's just pour some hot water in there and let that steep for a short time. Hey, this is one of my mugs. You can buy these mugs right down below this video. This is called People Who Live in Glass Houses Shouldn't Have Bones. And you may not be able to see it very clearly, but this kitty cat here sitting in front of the fishbowl has fish bones in his mouth. So I think you understand where I'm going here with this kitty proverb is what I call these. I did an entire series of kitty proverbs, and I do have them on my website as prints. And they are also mugs. That little kitty makes a nice, rich cup of tea. As I mentioned, some of the seeds I'm planting today are really special because of where they came from. And the seeds I'm going to plant, I'm going to plant two different flowers from Tasha Tudor's garden. That's what makes the seeds really special. They're from Tasha Tudor's garden. And to many of you who are familiar with her, Tasha Tudor is something of an American icon. Come on, Stella. No, no off the book, off the book, I have to open it. And that's because, oh, there she goes, she loves the greenhouse. That's because uh, Tasha Tudor illustrated many children's books. And she also had fabulous gardens and a very interesting lifestyle, but most of all, I am interested in her gardens and the flowers that I love from her garden got to be her lupins. Just look at those sensational and gorgeous lupins. And I also chose the lupin seed because it's perennial. And I'm going to have to ha put it in a very special garden because I'm planting a lot of different lupins from a lot of different companies. But I want to make sure that these are in a particular garden where they don't get mixed in with the other seeds. And the other plant that I chose is verbascum. Oh, here they are. Look at that. Now, who wouldn't give extra money for a pack of seeds if you could produce this kind of a meadow full of lupins? Isn't that beautiful? I acquired these seeds was that two of you commenters and friends gave me a heads up that Tasha's family was going to have a seed sale on one day. That was a few weeks ago. And I was able to get the two packs of seeds that I wanted. 
I normally would never spend the kind of money that I did on these seeds, seven dollars and fifty cents for a pack, but because she was such a remarkable gardener and a hard-working woman, I just wanted to have some seeds from her garden in mine. So I'm going to be very careful in growing these. That's what we're going to plant today. And I think I'm going to plant them in trays just so that I can really keep an eye on them and watch their growth. Here we have a package of lupin from Tasha Tudor, from the garden of Tasha Tudor. 45 seeds in this packet. I'm going to be planting 35 seeds in this packet because I'm actually trading 10 seeds with another friend of mine who bought a different type of Tasha Tudor seed and she bought some calendula and so I'm going to be getting those and she gets 10 of these. On the back of the packet it has a little bit about Tasha Tudor and it tells you how to plant the seeds, zones 3 through 8, good drainage, full sun, height 3 to 5 feet, and blooms in June. Germination rate is 14 to 21 days at 55 degrees. I could sow these directly into the garden in June, but I want to keep an eye on them, as I've said, because I want them to go into a particular garden. So after they have soaked, I am going to soak them in super hot water. I'm going to soak them for 2 to 3 days and then I will be planting these in um, a seed mixture that I've put together. This one, unfortunately, verbascum, uh, it says on the back that I cannot sow them until, let's see, they need a damp winter period to germinate. So you have to cover slightly in a cold, lightly in a cold frame or direct sow seed in frozen ground. So that's a lot like poppy seed. It likes to be germinating in the cold i uh, not sure what I'm going to do about that. I might have to do it in the refrigerator. I could do that. So I'll come back later on after three days and put those in the seed trays after they've soaked. But here, <laughs> here she is, the lovely Tasha Tudor in her garden with her corgis. Oh, I hope they grow. I've used a lot of different seed starting mixes that I've made here at home and most of them have been pretty good. Basically I usually use compost and peat as my base mix but in this case I'm using cocoa core and it's the first time I've used it and I have to tell you I'm pretty happy with it. It makes a really light and fluffy mix, uh, seed mix, starting mix and that's what you need. So what I've done is I've done one part vermiculite one part warm castings and three parts of the cocoa core, moistened cocoa core. And I, I really love it. I mean, it's just so light, fluffy, and it holds the moisture, supposedly. I've read good things about it. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than peat, and I have nothing against peat. I love it, but it is large and bulky, and this stuff just comes in big or, or small blocks. So it's a lot easier to store starting mixes. I also use perlite. So here's the deal. Perlite helps dr with drainage. Vermiculite helps you to retain moisture. And the uh, worm castings is simply worm poop. And this is for promoting vigorous plant and root growth and also breaking up clay soil. So those are the three ingredients. Aside from the main ingredient, which would either be peat compost or the coca core. Any three of them would be equally equally fine and I've used peat and compost as my seed starting mixtures for years and years and years. So I've got this seed starting mix 
the cocoa core seed starting mix in the pink trays. These are the trays that I'm using for the Tasha Tudor seeds just to dif differentiate them from my black trays full of lupin seed from a different company. So I'm going to soak them real well before I put the seeds in. Get this seed starting mix going. And I think I need to clean this spout out. It's not pouring very well. Not sprinkling very well. But I want it nice and wet. And then I'm just going to poke a little indentation into each compartment. I'm going to pop, drop the seed in. Just one seed because I don't have very many seeds. And water it again. The soil, the seed starting mix will pour over the little seed to cover it up because it what likes to germinate in darkness, this particular seed. And then we watch, we wait, we pray that these will all grow. So we'll keep you posted on this one. I've, I'm soaking the lupin seeds, but I'm also going to soak some of all my sweet peas, not all my sweet peas, about half of my sweet pea seeds because it's really not necessary, but it doesn't hurt, so why not give it a try if it's not too much trouble? I was missing one of my little hens for a couple days, so I went up in the barn looking for her, and sure enough, there she was. She'd made herself a nest on a, in a very weird spot, and I do not want any more chickens, so I took all her eggs away from her. She was very upset with me. She's a really small, small little bantam, and her eggs are very tiny. So we will eat these eggs or give them to the dogs to eat because they're still quite, I mean, she just started sitting on them in the last probably four days. I'm planting a lot of new peas this year. This is Perfume Delight and the reason I chose it is because it says that it is very heat tolerant and it's an antique sweet pea variety. Last year, I just loved my sweet peas. And this year, I think they're going to be even better. So, plant a little, soak these for a little while. Now, last night I was out, I was outside with the dogs, and all of a sudden I heard this screeching, screaming noise coming from the wood. So I got the flashlight, and I thought, what in the world is that? Is it an owl? Is it some kind of weird bird? What is that? And I just couldn't figure out what it was, and it just kept on and on intermittently. So I came back to the house and I looked up on the internet to see what kind of animal screams in the night. And it gave you the sound that they made in a video and it was the sound of foxes. And I had no idea that foxes screamed in the night. Some of these will go directly into the garden, and others will go into seed trays. I changed my mind about using the pink trays over there, and I'm going to use these larger seed trays from Silly Seedlings, they're called. They're made of silicone, and they're a lot bigger and deeper, so they will be able to stay in these trays for a longer period of time before I put them in the garden. Actually, I've been filming these video clips over the last week or so. So the lupins that I had soaking before I got the Tasha Tudor seeds were from Everwild and they're Russell lupins, Texas Blue Bonnet, and Perennial lupins and they have been starting to germinate in this tray right here and I wanted to just let you know that I'll keep you up on the process or the progress of all these seeds, especially the Tasha Tudor seeds, and we will eventually figure out what garden to put them in so they have their own special place. In the meantime, from Hopalong Hollow, next week we'll have an update on the Victorian herb garden, and I want to tell you that my husband did go out and buy a welder because we just don't have much faith in that epoxy that I used on the metal fencing. See you next time in Hopalong Hollow, and I hope you're out there planting your seeds and getting ready for a beautiful season coming up. Bye-bye.